Members of the jury, I understand you may have a verdict. Please give it to the bailiff. Thank you. I have a verdict reading as follows. We, the jury, find the defendant, William C. Zelensky, guilty of first degree intentional homicide as charged in the information dated at Wapaka, Wisconsin, this 23rd day of June, 2023, signed by the. Is that in fact the jury's verdict? So say you all? Yes, Your Honor. Do you wish to have the jury polled? You want to do it? You want me to do it? Mary Jo. The judge is polling the jury, not unusual, but if you wonder why we don't have audio, it's because names are being said. That is not information that can be shown or heard, and that is why you can still see what's going on in the courtroom. They are currently polling the jury. Let's listen in for what happens next. Again, guilty of first-degree intentional homicide. Members of the jury? Yes. Thank you, members of the jury. We truly appreciate your commitment of time and your attention in these matters. As I told you a week ago, I knew that in a, serving on the jury interferes with your lives. It disrupts your daily life. I know it's a burden but it's a burden taken on by people such as yourselves that makes ours the best jury system in the world. I did previously admonish you that you could not talk with anyone about this case. That admonishment is now relieved. You can talk with anyone about anything in the case. However, you are not obligated to. Um, if anyone uh, is harassing you, for instance, and you don't want to speak with them, tell, them, tell them the court says I don't have to. They have ways if your testimony were to be needed to get you brought back into court. But you are free to talk to anyone about anything that's happened here. Thank you for your service. Justice for the victim, 18-year-old Riley Menente Powell. Please that is the name seated. of the young man who was shot and killed by this convicted felon, first-degree intentional homicide. I will receive the verdict at this time. Your Honor, the state would move for judgment on the verdict. And the defense would ask for judgment notwithstanding the verdict, Your Honor. Well, as I indicated, I will receive the verdict at this time. I will uh, at least now deny the request for judgment, notwithstanding the verdict. I can set the matter for motion hearings if counsel desire. Otherwise, I take it we need to set the matter for sentencing. That's Is there going to be a request for pre-sentence investigation? 
Um, I think given the circumstances, it wouldn't be a bad thing to have for the court, um, particularly to determine the potential for eligibility at release. Okay, I will then direct that a pre-sentence investigation be conducted. How about one o'clock on August 1st? Let me double check that. Maybe a little too soon again for corrections. Let me call it back again. If, if we could get a different week than that, Your Honor. And I'd also be asking that um, it would be available by Zoom so that um, at least one victim can participate by Zoom. How about one o'clock on August 22nd? State can make that work. That will be fine. One o'clock, August 22nd. I will then direct that this companion civil case 20 CB 254 be brought in on that date and time. Anything else to address today? I'd ask that bond be revoked. I will direct the bond be revoked. Anything else? No, Your Honor. No. Okay. Thank you, everyone. We will recess. All right, here, you heard it first, first degree intentional homicide. And you are watching the defendant after he just heard from the judge the jury's decision. Guilty of first degree intentional homicide, he faces life in prison for that conviction. The judge just set sentencing for August 22nd at 1 p.m. I wanna give my opinion. My opinion is this jury decided that they considered different things to say he did it. Number one, those texts about taking it to the streets. The motive presented by the state, angry about his stolen reptiles. The video that clearly showed his demeanor. Michael Ayala is going to be joining me shortly, and he pointed out that the defendant looked like he was approaching that victim when he got the gun and, and went after him. The, the testimony, the girlfriend testifying, listen, the victim did not try to grab the gun. There was no struggle over the gun. I think all these things came together in addition to his demeanor after the shooting. He never checked on the victim. He never went to see how the victim was doing. He went to his car with a girlfriend and were emotionless as described by one of the witnesses. All of these things, I think, are the reason. Let me bring back in Matthew Mangino, Kirk Nurmi. Let me start with you, Matthew, your thoughts about this verdict. Now that we know it is guilty of first degree intentional homicide. 
Well, first, uh, Judge Ashley, uh, you know, that's why we never try to uh, predict what a jury is going to do. Um, at least uh, from my standpoint, I thought that the the quickness after the question with which they came back, that, that they weren't going to send somebody uh, to prison for life. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, uh, the prosecution put together a good case. They must have had one or two people who were hesitant about first degree and wanted to ask a question for clarification. And that's how we got this verdict. All right. Your thoughts, Kirk? You know, I think I said it before the verdict that the, 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 the video would be the driving force, right? I mean, that we take all the testimony aside, the arguments, everything else. When you have a video like that, the jury is going to reach conclusions based on what they see. They're not going to want to be told not to believe their lying eyes, right? So they're going to make their conclusions off the video. And I think Matt's right. That was some of the consternation regarding the verbiage based on what people were saying. And, you know, we talked before the verdict about one or two going the other way and it seems like rather than going down those one or two uh conceded and that's why we have the ver guilty verdict on first degree rather than second degree and i can't underscore enough the three of us know you can never predict what a jury is going to do but i will tell you i have great faith in our jury system and the fact that they take it seriously they read the law they look at the law they deliberate they decide they decide the facts that they believe and they come to a decision and in this case this decision is first degree intentional homicide. I am not surprised by the verdict because I think the evidence exists to support this verdict. I also just have to comment on the demeanor of the defendant. We've talked about it throughout different shows. And here he is. I mean, I, I, he's not, he had a few tears a moment ago. Clearly he's there talking with his attorney who's seated next to him. But I, I, I don't think at any point in time he has shown any extreme demeanor to suggest remorse or I can't believe this happened or oh my gosh it was an accident not even at the scene and I wonder if that is something the jury noticed Matthew well you know the jury looks at everything and and so you know a lot of times when we're trying a case and we think well this is the most important issue and I got to pound this issue home we find out that the jurors were focused on something completely different than what we thought was the most important issue in the case. And like you said, Judge, they're looking at the defendant. They're looking at how he responds to certain testimony. They're looking at his reaction to things that are said in the courtroom. All that's taken in. And, and in this case, that may have not uh, voted well for the defendant. I, I think it may not have either, Kirk, because the thing I noticed when he testified was at sometimes he seemed jovial to me. That would be my word to describe it, kind of laughing and other times kind of chewing on nails and doing different things and fidgeting a lot. And I again, some tears, but not a lot. And I just wonder if the jury saw that as non remorseful and he did this on purpose. That's certainly possible. I mean, when we talk about not really with self-defense, but more the accident, right? I mean, the, the testimony was that he loved this person and he cared for this person, didn't want to do this. And, and, and he kept the victim kept escalating the situation. And therefore, that's why this happened out of an accident. There would be more sorrow related to that accident. I mean, I could see the calm demeanor. It might just be him. It might be an intentional uh, on his part trying to not show any signs of anger particularly during cross-examination right but but I think when we you tie in that personal relationship I think that's where your comments Ashley or your insight is is particularly on point because of the idea of the, the, that he had a relationship with his victim